Okay, are you ready to add to Fetch as well as Axios? So it's going to be really easy. Let's do it the same way that we pass the parameters to jQuery as well as Ajax. We can pass it over to our Fetch function as well as to our Axios function. So that way we get all of that information being passed. And with Fetch, we need to set up an object because the only difference between the get and the post is that we actually pass some parameters. And let's build those out. So we use a ternary operator. So we've got a valid with a value within method. So we're going to check to see if it's equal to post. And if it is equal to post, then we need to build out our object. And otherwise, if it's not equal to post, we could just leave it blank or we could just leave a blank object there. So it actually doesn't matter. So method, this method is going to be post, but we can specify that here as well because we're getting that in a value for the value of method. It's equal to post. We know it's already equal to post. And where we pass that information, so that's passed within body. And then lastly, we also need to add in headers. So headers is going to be the same thing that we did down with uh, JavaScript, where we have to specify content type so that it knows what type of content type to expect. So this is an object within this object. And the content type is going to be the same header that we used here for our JavaScript. So let's go up and update that one as well. So within fetch, we've got content type. And I'll update this to be an object, key paired value. Uh, so that's it. So we've got our headers and the headers match. We've got the content we're passing in from form D. So this is serialized content and it's in a form format. And we saw that being output there. Uh, also, we can take a closer look and we can see the way that it looks over here when we serialize it. So this is coming in from jQuery. So let's uh, refresh it and try it out. So we're ready to post with fetch. So there we go. So that's the content we're posting and that's what we're receiving. We've got our response text over here. Uh, so we can see that we're actually posting content over and it's being received. It works within Fetch. It works within JavaScript. And it works within jQuery. So there's one last one. And let's not forget Axios. So in order to do Axios, the post is going to be uh, similar again. So we know that we're already passing in the method value over here. So let's update that to method. So now it's going to be posting. So we just need to specify the data that we're posting. And this is just going to be another parameter here. So it doesn't even matter that if we're uh, doing a get, if we don't have any data and we're not posting anything. So let's try this out. We're going to post it, that data. And over here, we should also have a catch if it fails. So it's always a good idea to have these failures built in so that if something goes wrong, you know that it's something has happened. So this is going to be an error. And it's, uh, it looks very similar to what we're doing with our, with our fetch, because again, it's promises. So pretty much the same thing. So data status axios and let's do fail. So everything seems to be working properly. We've got all of the responses there. So jQuery, JavaScript, uh, we can also try to get post to it and so on. And then we're receiving that response text, the status and our response as well. So there we go. So we've got the ability to update and use any one of these Ajax formats in order to send requests over to a URL. We're going to do an overview of the source code, run through it, as well as we'll try out some different URLs as well. So that's coming up next.